Today, we will talk about how to perform a delirium screening tool called the Delirium Triage Screen, or DTS. Here is my disclosure. I am currently supported by a Health Resources and Services Administration Award for our project, Iowa Geriatrics Workforce Enhancement Program. Our goal is to improve the care of older adults. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to define delirium and understand the concept and components of the delirium triage screen, as well as be able to apply the use of it in the emergency department. So what does delirium look like? Let me give you a typical scenario. You are taking care of a 78-year-old female patient who fell and was not able to get up. The patient called the ambulance and came to the emergency department. You are seeing the patient in a room. The patient has obvious shortening of the left lower extremity and is quite painful with range of motion, and you are concerned about hip fracture. Oddly, the patient is unable to answer any of your questions. The patient is trying to pull out her IV and seems somewhat agitated. You talk to her caregiver, who arrives later, and confirm that the patient is usually able to answer questions and converse. Based on this scenario, you get the idea that the patient has a left hip fracture, but we do not know what to do with her confusion or altered mental status. This is what the delirium looks like. What is delirium? Delirium is a global brain dysfunction that is common, serious, and fatal. In the emergency department, we see about 8% to 16% of delirium. It has several features. First, the patient's mental status change is new. Second, the patient with delirium usually has impaired attention. Third, the patient may have an altered level of consciousness during your assessment. Fourth, the patient may demonstrate disorganized thinking. It is important to note that fluctuating mental status over time is an important feature of delirium, and it is frequently the reason that delirium is missed. Clinicians can miss up to 80% of delirium if they use only the clinical gestalt, so there is an opportunity to improve identification by introducing routine delirium screening. The potential benefits of routine screening would be an accurate diagnosis of delirium and early identification of a high-risk patient population, which would be someone needing a physical or chemical restraint, one-to-one -one nursing care, and the mobilization of the behavioral health emergency team. Lastly, the identification of delirium can lead to increased reimbursement. So what is the best way to screen for delirium in the emergency department? We are proposing a two-step approach to screen for delirium in our emergency department. Step one will be the delirium triage screen, DTS, performed by nursing staff, which should take less than 20 seconds. Step two will be a confirmation of delirium by a physician using the brief confusion assessment method, or BCAM. Because the DTS has a specificity of 55%, confirmatory testing using the BCAM is required to diagnose delirium. On the right, you can see an overview of how the BCAM is administered. We will be focusing on the two components of the DTS. One, determining level of consciousness as measured by the Richmond Agitation Station Scale, and two, testing for inattention with the backward spelling test. The DTS will begin with assessing patients using the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale, or RAS. The 10-point scale allows healthcare providers to rank a patient's current state of consciousness based on their reply to a question such as, how are you? or where are you from? If the patient cannot verbally respond, they can be asked to perform the action instead. Ranging from negative 5 to positive 4, this scale includes various levels of sedation and agitation. An individual who shows wakefulness and is able to answer a question appropriately would not show altered consciousness and would therefore be at a zero on the scale. Someone on the lower end of the scale may be unresponsive to voice or physical stimulation. Someone who does not respond to either, or in other words, is in a coma, would be at a negative five on the RAS. A delirious patient may also look like the individual on the right. Restless and agitated patients are on the higher end of the scale. Patients who are combative and need to be restrained because they are in danger to staff would be at a positive 4 on the RAS. If a patient is determined to be anywhere other than 0 on the scale, the DTS would be considered positive. This patient would then be further assessed by a physician to confirm delirium using the BCAM. 
If the patient does not show an altered level of consciousness, in other words, they have a RAS of zero, the nursing staff will test for inattention. This will be done by asking the patient to spell the word lunch backwards. If the patient makes more than one error, the DTS is considered positive and additional assessment, the BCAM, is required. If the patient does not show an altered level of consciousness and does not display inattention, the patient would be considered DTS negative and delirium can then be ruled out without further testing. This is because the sensitivity of the DTS is very high. But again, if the DTS is positive, proceed to the BCAM because the specificity of the DTS is about 50%. The BCAM, which has a much higher specificity, will be able to confirm a positive DTS. <clears throat> Once the assessment is complete, nursing staff will document DTS results in EPIC under the tab, Delirium Triage Screen. Here is a screenshot of what you may see. This is an example of a patient who has a RAS of zero and only made one error during the backward spelling test, so the DTS outcome is recorded as negative. However, if the patient scored anything other than zero on the RAS, the DTS outcome would automatically appear as positive and the second part of the assessment would not be required. As we have covered, if a patient is DTS positive, it will be documented in EPIC to inform providers so that they can perform the BCAM. But what if the provider is unavailable to perform the BCAM or what happens once the patient is admitted? Inpatient nursing staff will perform either the DOS, Delirium Observation Screening Scale, or the CAM ICU. These assessments will be done regardless of the DTS results. The DOS and the CAM ICU are two other delirium screening tools that can be used to diagnose delirium. Because the sensitivity and specificity of both are so high, if delirium is detected from either assessment, the patient can be diagnosed with delirium without further evaluation by physician. Furthermore, if the patient is determined to have delirium, they may be connected to a program such as the Hospital Elder Life Program, HELP, or the AF Bundle to ensure that they receive proper care. If a patient screens positive for delirium, take precautionary measures as appropriate to maintain the patient's safety. Delirious patients often require close supervision. For example, if a patient is showing signs of agitation or violence, the tolerate, anticipate, don't agitate, or ta-da approach can be used to manage and prevent agitation in delirious patients. The first step is to tolerate the delirious patient's behavior. They may try to remove their catheter or get out of bed without assistance, for example. Tolerating their behaviors will allow the patients to feel a sense of control and may also indicate that something is bothering them. The next step is to anticipate what the patient may do next. This is to avoid any factors that may cause or amplify agitation. Lastly, don't agitate the patient. Some agitators, such as physical restraints, are obvious. However, something such as reorientation could also be an agitator. Essentially, the goal is to de-escalate the patient. Dimming the lights or having family members or familiar objects at the patient's bedside may also help. Here are some frequently asked questions. Is the DTS valid in patients who are illiterate? Yes. Individuals who have attained lower levels of education have shown to be at increased risk for delirium and they should receive a formal delirium assessment. Do I have to do the lunch backwards task if the patient has an altered level of consciousness? No. The patient is automatically considered DTS positive if they have a RAS other than zero. Having them spell the word lunch backwards provides no additional information. How should I rate the DTS if the patient refuses to spell the word lunch backwards or can't perform this task at all? If the patient refuses to or can't spell the word lunch backwards, then this patient is considered DTS positive. What if a patient takes a long pause or perseverates of a letter during the spelling test? If the patient pauses or perseverates for a longer than 15 seconds, the task is over and the patient is DTS positive. The link shown here will take you to a website with additional information, including an example video that shows how to perform the DTS. To summarize, delirium is a serious medical condition seen commonly among older adults. 
The DTS is a two-step approach nursing staff can use to quickly screen older adults for delirium. A positive DTS will be followed by further assessment with the BCAM performed by a physician. This concludes the presentation on the delirium triage screen. There will be a post-test and a practice video that I recommend you watch. I hope that you understand the definition of delirium and how we will be applying the DTS in our emergency department. Thank you.